On my channel is a tutorial of how to create the cinematic effect in Create Studio Pro. A link to the tutorial can be found in the description below. Here is a video I created using the cinematic effect. Hey guys, do we? Do we seem blurry? We do. Everyone except for Todd. Why is that, Todd? Well, you are supporting cast. What? The camera focuses on the main character, which is me. Well, what if we have a character that will make you supporting cast? Do you? Yeah. 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 Yes, we do. Oh no, not Danny. Danny, wait, come back. Where do you think he is going? I knew I shouldn't have given him that hero suit. Todd is going to get a big head now. If you want to know how I created this video, keep watching and I'll show you how. This is Randy with another Create Studio Pro tutorial. This type of video takes a fair amount of planning. I know I want a cluster of characters in the background with space for Danny to pop out of the hole. Plus, a dialogue needs to be generated along with the character actions chosen to match what they are saying. And all that should be put together before the cinematic blur effect is applied. Here is a screenshot of the script I use, and of course yours will look different. You will notice that I vary speed and pitch, and I do that to make the voices sound less robotic. By the way, Jessica, Chris, Daniel Madison, and Elijah are voices in the Twinkle app that I use for text-to-speech. After generating each short phrase in Twinkle, I download the audio to a file. These audio files are then imported into Create Studio Pro. Here is what they look like after I arrange them to match the script. A tip is to give your audio a name so you know what is being spoken. Todd, aka Cool Guy, is the main character so each audio clip of him speaking has his name. I will let you in on a little secret. Very seldom do I get the script right in one pass. Often I rework the script to better match the character's talking actions. For example, I usually remove words or add words to match when the character concludes their talking action. After the audio is in place, I worked with one character at a time, matching the actions to the dialogue. I drop them onto the canvas and will not reposition or resize the character. This really helps when you need to sync the character's lips to the dialogue. I have included a link to the sync lips tutorial in the description below. Okay, since Todd is the main character, I started with him. After a short idle action, I added the dancing action. If necessary, these actions can be extended by clicking on the in animation marker to expand each action to fill the space until the next one. I used the audio waveform as a guide to start the talking action and used the techniques in the lip sync tutorial to create snapshots when he stopped talking. Let's fast forward through this part where I intermixed idle and talking actions all the way to the final dance scene. Okay, before creating the other characters, let's review what we want to do. Todd will be in the foreground while the other characters are in the background. And I will switch the blur back and forth between them. The best way to achieve this is to bounce a video of the main character and another video of the supporting cast. What do I mean by bounce a video? It is publishing a video sequence that will later be imported back into Create Studio Pro. For the Todd Bounce, publish the video with transparency by selecting the movie file type and toggle on transparent. Save this video as a file on your computer. Now switch to building the supporting cast. I saved the Todd project with a save as 
and named it Supporting Cast. I did this so the audio is already in place. We don't need the Todd track, so I will delete that and select a background scene. This one will be a good one to create the cinematic effect. Now it is time to start building the supporting cast, and I will do them one at a time. I started with Danny to make sure that I will have enough space for the other characters. He will be entering, jumping through a hole, shortly before Todd says, Oh no, not Danny. After Danny jumps through the hole, I will give him an idle action until it is time for him to transform into a hero and fly away. To make Danny's departure more interesting, I added both a position and scale animation. Click on the right diamond and then open the properties panel. Increase the scale to 50%, then move Danny above the canvas. Now it appears that Danny is flying over the viewer's head. With Danny built, I will go back to the beginning to create a supporting cast member. As each character is dropped onto the canvas, I will not position or resize in case I need a snapshot to sync lips. One thing I realized later is that I did not have to be precise on syncing lips when the characters are blurred, so that did make things easier. <clears throat> okay, back to the first character, Emma. For her, I did not need a snapshot, so I will resize and put her into position and move on to the Mike character. I will fast forward through the creation of Mike's tracks, but in this case, a snapshot was needed so, before repositioning Mike, I selected all the clips and grouped them. Now the group can be moved and resized to match with Emma. The next two characters use the same techniques, so I will jump to where all the characters' actions are in place. Again, I will bounce this video, but this time I want to include the background, so the bounce should be as an mp4 file. Next, create a project and import the two videos that was bounced. Add the supporting cast video that includes the background first. Then load Todd and say yes to load it as a transparent alpha channel. Create Studio Pro warns that this will take a while and it sure does. Okay, size and position him in the foreground. Now it is time to add the blur effect to the supporting cast. Drag the blur effect down onto the supporting cast track. Now I feel the default blur is too much, so that can be dialed back by clicking on blur in the top right and lower the strength to 6%. Move the playhead to the point where the focus will switch from Todd to the supporting cast. Select both tracks and cut them. Now select the supporting cast after the cut and in the top right click on Effects, click on Blur, toggle on In Animation. Finally, toggle on Reverse Animation. Again, the cinematic tutorial will walk through these blur instructions at a slower pace. Okay, next select the Todd track after the cut and drag the blur effect onto it. Click on the word blur in the top right and toggle on in animation. Now, as I move the playhead, you see the blur moves from the cast in the background to Todd in the foreground. Next, I move the playhead to the spot where I want to swap the focus back and cut both tracks again. Now we want Todd to transition from blur to in focus, so select the Todd track, click on the blur effect, 
Toggle on in animation and toggle on reverse animation. For the supporting cast, click on the blur effect, toggle on in animation, and toggle off the reverse animation. I will play it through to make sure everything looks okay. Oh no, not Danny. Danny, wait, come back. Looks good. That is how to use Blur to create a cinematic video. Hey everyone, have a good day and happy creating.